but two great ones. Well, Scotty Bowman likes to run two-part penalty killing efforts, and you've seen the pattern he's used, Goring and Ganey out there to start, and then Middleton and Trottier to finish it up. Here's Middleton against the boards. Sports off is hold, holds Middleton down, a holding penalty, and Canada will get a power play advantage in 10 seconds. Well, I think the crowd helped a little bit on that one. I think that they went after Mr. Olsen there, and I think when everybody yelled and screamed, he jumped a little bit after two consecutive penalties to Team Canada. All right, we're, we may get a replay on this, and we may see Olsen with his back to the play because he was turned away from it. So there's Sportsoff, and uh, Sportsoff, 17-11, but Olsen was up on the boards and it turned away as the two players came together right at his feet. In any case, holding will be the call. USSR penalty, number 26, Alexander Foxtop, two minutes for holding at 17 minutes, 11 seconds. Gretzky out there, Hartsburg, Lafleur, Bork. Lafleur from the face off, back to Bork. We'll have the manpower advantage in four seconds. Now as Bork backs into his own zone, feeds it ahead, past Hartsburg at center ice. Gretzky overskated it. Hartsburg moves up, slooped off. And now Canada has a power play as Potvan comes on. No score in the hockey game, Lafleur. Potvan over for Bork, ahead for Potvan. Potvan coming to center ice. And he seemed to stumble on a crack in the ice or something, and he lost possession of the puck, and out at center ice, big slooped off. He hits the line. He's stopped by Bork. Lafleur at center ice with Dion and Gretzky. It's off. Gretzky stick goes right to Tretiak. Vasiliev's there. Clears it behind the net. Babinov clearing it out to center ice. Bork clearing it rink wide. Dion. Dion. Trying to get control of that puck now. Dion circling back. Here he comes. Dion coming to the line. Dion, two good moves. Dion still with it. Finally, he's hooked from behind. Just enough to lose possession of it. Makarov doing a good job. Number 24 for the Soviet. Bork, he's got room. And Bork made that final move on Babinov, and Babinov didn't go for it. Now Bork again. Bork, Gretzky, his shot. Dion. Dion, Lafleur, he whacked at it. And Babinov cleared it off out of harm's way. Now Lafleur, watch out in front. And moving in with Dion. Now they get it in front, and it's cleared down the ice by Makarov. Team Canada makes the change as Potvan goes back. Potvan working with Robinson. The Trottier line is out there. Ahead for Trottier. Gillies and Bossy with him. Trottier over the line. Heading for the corner. Under pressure from Belia Leptinov. Into the corner it goes. Here's Bossy. Bossy looking for the man in front. Bossy out in front. Went by everybody. Potvan. Potvan bouncing it in. Here's Bossy. His shot and it's loved by Fred Jack and he holds on with 53 seconds remaining in the period. And now, for the preview of our first intermission show, here's Bernie Pascal. Thanks, Brian, and it's been an action-packed first period here at the Montreal Forum. Coming up in our first intermission, Alan Eagleson and Johnny Esau, a special presentation. We'll also have an interview with Butch Goring of Team Canada. An update on Terry Fox Day, and Eddie Westfall will be along with his highlights. And now back to the final seconds of this opening period, Ron and Tom. Well, it's been a goalless first period. 53 seconds left, four seconds remaining in the power play advantage. Sportsoff still off for holding. Here's the shot by Robinson, and it's blocked, and Robinson gets it again. Robinson circling, gives to Hartsburg. He shoots, and it's wide of the net. Now Ganey, Ganey lets it go by him. It's coming out of the penalty box with Sportsoff. It goes into the corner. It's cleared down the ice. Robinson will go back for it. And as he touches it, Bob Luther, the linesman, calls it for icing. And it'll be bracked back down into the Soviet zone. Icing, by the way, an interesting statistic in the period. Soviet Union has iced the puck four times. Canada has not yet iced the puck, which would seem to indicate that Canada's had a little better control of the period. Maybe that's what Victor is talking to his charges about. Maybe he's not too happy with some of those long passes. Another interesting statistic is the offside statistic, and there have only been two called in the period. On the face off now, Fedisov. Fedisov behind the net. Bearing it straight up ice. They look for that long lead pass. Makarov was up there, but it went by him, and icing will be called again. Number five in the period. 23 seconds left. 
and uh, we'll have a face off to the left of the Soviet goal. There's Denny Potvan. Had a great tournament. Now Gretzky is that final face off. Could be an important one with 23 seconds left. Want to get control, get that one last flurry. Shots on goal in the period. Now 11 4 for Canada. But there's no score. Now Dion as Gretzky is chased out of the face off circle. And they realign themselves, and from the faceoff, Lafleur out to Potvin. He's got the shot. It's right on. It's loved by Kretschak, reaching and grabbing it out of midair. Smart play on the draw, where it was just tipped to the free man on the side, and you see Guy Lafleur putting the puck back. And of course, Denny Potvin has that long, low shot, and he had it right on the net. But Guy Lafleur making the good play. He was uncovered against the boards. The tap went to him. He put it back to Potvin and then went to the net looking for that rebound or the extra opportunity. See the importance of grabbing that rebound with three Team Canada players right in front of the Soviet goal. Dion will take the draw again. From the face off, Lafleur back to the point. Robinson set, blocks at the point as he got the shot away by Karutov. Robinson. Batting it away, but Krutov moving in with 10 seconds left in the period. Gretzky moves in as well, and Gretzky starts out. Gretzky with four seconds left, he'll take a long, drifting shot, and that should do it for the period. That is it. No goals in the period. Canada and the Soviet Union have played to a nothing-nothing tie through 20 minutes of this game. The shots on goal in the first period. Canada 12, the Soviet Union 4. Canada Cup 81. We'll be with us in a moment, but first let's go down to Bernie Pascal. Right, Ron, and there's no denying the fact it's an action-packed first period. The Soviets and Team Canada. And with us right now, we have the Vice President Sports, CTV, Johnny Esau, to make a special presentation. John? Thank you very much, Bernie. Well, you know, I can remember back in 1969 when it looked like international hockey was over. From that point to this point where we're seeing the greatest hockey in the world and all those years in between, it could only happen because one man saw it dying in 69. He personally made it happen. It could not have happened with the National Hockey League, with anybody else except for the perseverance of Al Eagles. Now, on behalf of CTV and TVA, I went over to Ostranders and said, now what is there that Al Eagleson doesn't have? And they said, well, they gave this beautiful full of a clock, and, and uh, I guess this is liable to keep you awake in the middle of the night if it rings at the wrong time, but that'll remind you of all those great moments that we as uh, sports fans across Canada have had watching the best hockey in the world, and we simply want to say thank you for doing it for the fans and for CTV and TVA. John, that's terrific, and uh, the, the thanks are mine because I've enjoyed every, bit, every minute of it. The ones who really deserve the thanks are the players who are giving everything they've got for their country tonight. They're doing it in honor of Terry Fox. They're doing it in honor of Canada, and we're happy that everybody's with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Al. Thank you very much, Al. And Johnny Eason at the end of the first period, the score is Team Canada nothing, the Soviets nothing. We'll be back with the first intermission in just a moment. If you think all radial tires are the same, think again. This is the Firestone 721 Fuel Fighter Radial, a superb combination of traction and smooth, dependable performance. And inside, the backbone of 721 technology. Seven steel filaments wrapped around two, then bound together by one more. The 721 Fuel Fighter is the safest, most advanced original equipment tire in our history. Since 721 quality is a choice of major new car manufacturers, make it your choice. Only Firestone has it. There's only one Fred Fletcher. He's a welder. He loves working with kids. But he has a family to look after. That's why he has his own life insurance plan. His London Life representative helped make that plan just as individual as he is. We have a trophy for you, Mr. Fletcher. You're the greatest. And a London Life representative can do the same for you. Of course, your plan may not be like Fred's. But then at London Life, every life is something special. I hate this kind of work. Don't let me rush you anything, okay? I get paid extra for breaking and entering. I believe you gentlemen are under arrest. So this is what it's like to be a private detective. I only wish I knew which side you were on. Freewheeling, hard driving. That's Simon and Simon, two good-looking brothers who have no trouble at all finding all the explosive cases they need. 
So, if it's adventure you want... Welcome back to the Montreal Forum, and that's the statistic after 20 minutes of play, a scoreless tie between the Soviets and Team Canada. In an action-packed first 20 minutes, and with us we have Butch Goring of Team Canada, a member of the Stanley Cup champion New York Islanders, and I guess to say it was action-packed, uh, looking at the perspiration and the effort that Team Canada's put out, I'm sure you'd echo that comment. Well, it's, uh, it's full of action, that's for sure, Bernie, as you can see, the uh, Soviets have come to play tonight. Uh, I think they're remembering the uh, is it A3 slash we gave them a couple nights ago. You had some great opportunities, uh, Butch. I know that one play, uh, you saw Barry Beck breaking on the left, and uh, that was one of several great scoring chances Team Canada had. Yes, I think we, uh, we had the better chances in the first period, that's for sure. I think we all shot them 12-4, and uh, we couldn't get any by them. Uh, Trechak's playing a heck of a game for him, but uh, it's still 40 minutes yet, and I'm sure we're going to get a couple by. Butch, it seemed to be, or in the early going at least, uh, the Soviets uh, were called for icing several times. They're trying that lead pass, and uh, Team Canada's nullifying at almost every opportunity by covering the, uh, the forwards in the center ice area. Yeah, so the, they like to direct all their attack through the middle, and we've, we've tried to plug it up as much as possible and slow them down. And the Soviets are kind of notorious in the first period for kind of making sure they don't make too many mistakes, and I'm sure they gave up a lot, a lot more chances than they really wanted to, but, uh, you know, they're just like any other team. If you don't give them any time, and they're just an ordinary hockey team. Butch, I talked to you this morning at practice, and you said, well, I really haven't caught up in the emotion of tonight's game, because it was several hours away, but when you hear that applause from the crowd here in the forum, it has to be inspiring. Yes, that was, uh, you know, tremendous when we first came on the ice, that uh, it really gave you a lift, and, uh, you know, if you had any second thoughts about being here, that those are certainly all gone after listening to those, those people from Montreal. Okay, what do you have to do now to get uh, sort of control of this game? Uh, Tretiak has been outstanding. Uh, you have to break that armor. Yeah, we need, uh, we need the first goal to get things uh, going in our direction. Uh, the Soviets are playing kind of a kitty by the door, and they're, they're looking for, for us to make a mistake and, and get a one-goal lead. And I think it's just crucial that we get the first goal. And if we get the first goal, then they got to open up. And, and uh, I, they don't have the goal scorers we got. So if we can get the first one, we can get two or three. Well, Team Canada into the... Uh championship game averaging six goals a game the soviets had that power play but uh, you had some great penalty killing out and uh, i guess you've just got to stay on top of them yeah that's for sure they they move it around good but you know uh, when you kill penalties all year it's it's the same thing uh, if you can stay on the on the offensive team and, and not give them any time then, it, then it's very very tough you know they like to get that one good scoring chance and we're just trying to make them do things they don't want to do and so far we've been you know fairly successful so uh, if our power play can be better than their power play, then, you know, we'll win the hockey game. Well, Butch, I know all of Canada is sitting back, and there's special interest for you back in Manitoba. Uh, a lot of people there supporting you and Team Canada, I'm sure. Well, I know that uh, we've got a lot of fans back there, and like you said, there's, there's people all over Canada, all over the United States, and, and we play hockey in the United States, too, so I know they're all, all cheering for us to, to beat the, the Soviet team, and uh, so we're just, we're just giving it our best shot, and Hopefully our best shot will be the best. Okay, Butch, congratulations. Keep up Thank the you. good work. And I know Team Canada will come out flying in period number two, as you did in the first period. Butch Goring, our guest, and Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. This is the tough San Andreas fault area. The truck, the new 1981 Toyota 4x4. And although the fault's tough, the truck proved tougher. Tougher because it has the biggest engine you can buy in a small four-wheel drive. So if you get stuck with something less, it's no one's fault but your own. Oh, 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 what a feeling. Tough truck. I'd like to set the record straight on molded skates. A micron molded skate such as this MX gives better fit, protection, and support than you'll ever get from a stitched skate. What's more, microns are light, flexible, and comfortable. So you coaches out there saying kids can't develop skills on molded skates should maybe think again. I'm so sure Micron's the best, even for children just starting out, that my name goes on this skate, and the skate goes on Stanley, my son. Call me if you'd like to know more after the series is over. I'm Dave Thomas, and I started Wendy's with one restaurant and a philosophy. Never use frozen hamburgers. Use fresh ground beef. Then I figured... Why would anyone go anyplace else? Once you've tasted Wendy's hamburgers made from fresh ground beef, and you know it tastes great. Just kidding. Why go anyplace else? Beats a heck out of me, Dave. Wendy's big 99 cent burger deal. Wendy's delicious quarter pound hamburger, just 99 cents. Ain't no reason to go anyplace else.
at the Forum in Montreal, a capacity crowd, and we hope you along the CTV network are enjoying this exciting game tonight between the Soviets and Team Canada scoreless after the first period. Now let's join Lloyd Robertson in Toronto and a Terry Fox Day update. Lloyd? One year ago this month, Terry Fox ran his last kilometer for cancer. The athlete of the year in 1980, the young man who inspired a nation with the example of his own mission. April of 1980, Terry dipped his artificial leg in the Atlantic Ocean off Newfoundland, and the Odyssey was underway. Through the eastern provinces, interest was building. But by the time he got to Montreal and then Ontario, Terry Fox was on his way to becoming a Canadian legend. Then, last September, the shock. Terry had to interrupt his mission. Cancer had struck a game. All I can say is uh, if there's any way I can get out there again and finish it, I will. Well, Terry, as we all know, never returned to the road again, but today, thousands of Canadians, inspired by his quiet courage, continued his marathon of hope. Not only in Canada. Canadians ran for Terry today in West Germany, China, Japan, Israel, Bermuda, and here, in England, in London's Regent Park. They ran in Newfoundland, where Terry began his journey. They ran, they walked, they even wheelchaired in over 700 communities across Canada, hoping to raise millions of dollars for cancer research through pledges and $5 entry fees. Hundreds of thousands of Canadians took up Terry's cause today, including several thousand in Halifax, where the weather cleared up just in time. I know Terry Fox, and uh, me, um, I am uh, like that. Well, I think I should, and lots of people should. Uh, Terry Fox did. And as you can see, the weather was kind to Terry's supporters in Quebec City, too, where just one of the country's 710 kilometer events took place. The largest event, nearly 7,000 participants, was in Ottawa. The right day to dedicate an elementary school in Terry's name. These words from fitness minister Gerald Regan. We are today honoring a very genuine Canadian hero, and we are supporting his cause by the action that we take. Terry Fox first captured national attention in Toronto. His inspiration was very evident there today, and so were his admirers. I'm a great fan of Terry's. I don't think uh, you ever see another man like that in Canada. More good weather in Winnipeg. The sun smiled down on the city's annual women's marathon, dedicated this year in pledges to the memory of Terry Fox. And in British Columbia, the home province of Terry Fox, they went all out for their native son, running as many kilometers as they could, any way they could do it. It was the least they could do for the young man who did so much for cancer research and for Canada. And the estimates so far, the number of runners, over 133,000 turned out for Terry today, and the pledges up to this time, over $1,070,000. We'll be back during the second intermission of the hockey game, and we'll be talking to Terry's mother and father. The second period of the Canada Cup final will begin after these messages. Small copiers, small prices. Small copiers, small prices. Small copiers, small prices. This way, brothers. Small copiers, small prices. Small copiers, small prices. Small copiers, small prices. Big copiers. Small prices. Small copiers, small prices. When a visiting delegation asked Brother Dominic to match their very fussy requirements to their particularly small means, he simply introduced them to one of the fussy and stingy copiers from Xerox. And because Xerox has more small copiers than anyone else, they found one that was just the right size, just the right quality, and also solved the problem of their particularly small purse. And the price, Brother Dominic? It's a miracle. ticket gives me an instant chance at $5,000, plus five Friday draws for $500,000. That's why. I love Fridays. I love Fridays. And you love Fridays. In the provincial weekly lottery, love Fridays. At the forum.
Forum in Montreal, a scoreless tie between Team Canada and the Soviet Union after the first period. And an action-packed period it was, and with us we have former NHL veteran, a veteran of 18 years in the NHL, Eddie Westfall. And Eddie, I think it's uh, appropriate to say it's really the type of hockey we expected from the Canada team and the Soviets. Everywhere you went today, Bernie, uh, people talked about the game tonight. Canada, the, Uni or the Soviet Union. It's exactly what everybody thought it was going to be. It's action, end-to-end -end action, and it has everything. It has skating, shooting, passing, and good heavy hitting. They're keeping the sticks and elbows down. It's going to get a little chippy, I think, sometimes, but I think the players are going to have to control themselves because they can't give up too many foolish penalties and stay successful. Well, I know in earlier conversations with yourself and Tom Watt, it was mentioned that goaltending could be the key, and Tretjak, uh, although Mike Liewitt wasn't tested all that much, he made a couple of good saves, but Tretjak was, well, the Tretjak we know. <laughs> no question, Bernie. Our highlight package tonight, obviously, no goals. We've got lots of action, and it started off right at the beginning. Watch Brian Trotje on Vetislav Fetsov, boom, Trotje lets them know that they're out to hit and hit hard. Then Canada keeps con coming. Good scoring chance. Watch Engblom here as he circles Fetisov. Good pass. There's Ganey. Just tipped wide. Tretjak, of course, in good position. Right from the faceoff here, Kenny Linsman back to Hartsburg. Here's a shot. Good chance at the net by Middleton. And uh, broken up, held off. Canadians pressing. They did outshoot them by quite a bit. Here, Marcel Dion, another good opportunity. Look at Trechak. Look at the concentration and the balance. And here are the Soviets, right back, right after Brian Trache. That was looked of, trying to take Trache's head off. He saw him at the last minute. This was on a power play attempt as the Russians, number seven from the point, Kasatonov from Gamayev, uh, saved by Leut. He didn't have a lot of business, but you can see he actually made two saves on the same play. And then Trechak. At the other end of the ice, this is how the play went, back and forth. That's Dennis Potvin, his pass to Bossy. Bossy gets it away quick, but just as quick with his glove hand is Trey Jack making the save. That was a power play attempt right at the end of the period. Look at this shot by Dennis Potvin. He usually scores in the NHL on shots like that. Not so. Trey Jack again. Eddie, what would be the feeling now, Team Canada, knowing that they outplayed the Soviets in the first period, but they're still looking for their first goal? It must be a bit of a downer. It's a, it is in a way, but then you have to look at it from the other side, Bernie, and you have to say that uh, because they did get the shots they got, because they played the way they played, there's only one obstacle they have to overcome right now, and that's the goaltender, Trey Jack. If they keep getting the opportunities, they'll get fun by them. Well, we're all looking forward to the upcoming period, period number two, and our thanks to Eddie Westfall. We'll be back with Ron and Tom and the play-by-play -play of the second period. Canada Cup 81 will return in a moment. To run a successful business enterprise requires good management, a good product, good service. Big or small, the principles apply. It's the same for a business the size of CN. We are a sound, profit-oriented group of companies competing in the marketplace by providing indispensable goods and services to the nation. CN, in business for Canada. Prestone 2 will show you what happens inside your radiator if your antifreeze is weak and neglected. Look, after only 9,000 miles, rust, corrosion, continued neglect can clog passages causing costly damage. But look at this radiator. After 9,000 miles of Prestone 2, total protection, a real difference. Prestone 2's patented silicone silicate formula bonds to all metals, including aluminum, to lock out corrosion. Tested, proven protection. Get Prestone 2, the corrosion fighter. Team Canada filing out of the dressing room area here at the Forum on the west side, and uh, there's Ken Linsman as you take a look at the statistics in that first period of a goalless 20 minutes. Canada out shooting the Soviet Union 12 to 4. The penalties even, three apiece. Canada seemed to have the edge, but they just weren't getting the good hard shot. They're the attendance here at the Forum, 17,033 to watch this game, and it's an excited crowd who have come to see Team Canada defend its Canada Cup championship. The shots on goal in that period, as we mentioned, 12 to 4. Mike Bossy had three of the 12 shots. Rick Middleton had two. Everybody else with one. The four shots, Kazatona, Kimea, Prutov, and Rozdzietski for the Soviet Union. And Canada will be sending 
the Trottier line out along with Robinson and, Le, uh, and Potvin. And there's Vladislav Tretiak. We started to mention that that broken ankle he suffered at the beginning of 1980 may have been a blessing in disguise because they, the feeling was they were overusing Tretiak and he was getting stale. Now he seems to be sharing his goaltending with uh, Chinik, the second goaltender in the Soviet Central Red Army. And he's a lot fresher for these tournaments. Face off and back to Potvan in his own zone. Potvan around behind the net. Both teams playing at full strength as Potvan slides in to the boards under the checking of Krutov and a face off. Well, the Soviets going in deep, Krutov uh, going in to do the four checking. The other winger is taking uh, the man against the boards, and the center is playing high. Again, they've started the cautious type of four checking, looking for Team Canada to give up the puck deep inside their own zone. Set for the face off. Trottier against Larionov. On the face off, Robinson. Robinson straight up ice. Bossy, great pass, and Bossy's through the defense. Around Fedosov now trying to get set. And Fedosov did a good job as he stayed right with him. Now Bossy to Troche. Troche trying to get it to Gillies. Intercepted by Fedosov, but he can't get it out as Potvan rattles it off the boards. Fedosov behind the net. Back there is Kazatinov to the far side. And out at center ice now. The Soviets, Krutov trying to get that pass. Now Makarov over the line. Great stick handler as he goes into the corner after it. Troche on top of him. Potvan. Potvan being checked. Loose at the side of the net into the corner Gillies behind the net for Robinson Robinson off the boards for Gillies and center ice tracking it down as Kazatonov Kazatonov with a long shot that would have missed the net Leut leaves it for Robinson Robinson ahead for Gare Dion Dion at center ice and down over the line he shoots it and it's gloved by Tretiak and he holds on well a nice tricky little move there by Marcel Dion. He looked like he was going to pass. It looked like he was going to pass, then pull it in, pulled the defender for the Soviet Union, and then ripped the shot. The Trechak was able to stop. It was a little high. Just looks as if he's going to pass, pass, cuts across off the line. We don't see the little deep. Rips the shot. Trechak is able to glove it. Marcel Dion. Facing off against Shepilev from the face off. Soviets control, and it's third right onto the stick of Gretzky. Out to center ice, and Shepilev, number 21, to the line. Bork on top of him, playing the man as Lafleur goes into the corner. Kapustin on top of Shepilev moving in as well as the puck is poked away, and Gretzky. Gretzky feathers a pass out for Hartsburg at center ice. He shoots it into the corner on this side. Dion breaking in. Babinov picks it off. Clears it to the line and out to center ice, and Hartsburg is there. Hartsburg waiting for Dion to get onside. Dion picks it up as it stayed outside the line. Bork, Lafleur, Lafleur over for Hartsburg. Hartsburg trying to get it to Gretzky, breaking down the right side. Lafleur kicks it in over the line. The shot! And it went right behind Tretjak and out the other side. Now here's Gretzky. Gretzky to Dion. Dion in for Gretzky, and Gretzky slid it across for Lafleur, who missed it. Now at center ice, it's Shalimov. Shalimov over the line. Shalimov tied up at the defense, and here comes Gretzky along with Duque. Gretzky to the line. Gretzky trying to get it in front. Hartsburg in deep as well. Ganey picks it up at center ice, and he cleared it in with Hartsburg still trapped in there, and it's called on the offside. Well, Trechak uh, seemed to have trouble with his glove on that shot. The shot came. He had it in his glove. It went through and out the other side. If it had just dropped behind him, it would have been the Team Canada's first goal. But Guy Lafleur just ripped that shot, and somehow, I don't know what he did. It went into his glove or out of his glove. He seemed almost to throw it behind the net, but he wasn't able to control it. At center ice now, here come the Soviets once again. Over the line is Brozgetsky. He stopped. It's out at center ice again, and racing back into his own zone is Billy Lentinov. Billy Lentinov. Behind the net, starting out, he fed it blindly out over center ice. Down over the line, Gimaev out in front. They pass for Golikov. Now they try to clear it in front again. Duque digging in against the boards after it. He's checked on the play. It's shot out to center ice. Ilya lets it off. Brozgetsky shooting it in. Beck going after it behind the net. Beck just poking it past the four checking. Now moving in is Goring. He passes for Anglo and to Ganey at center ice. Trechak is able to 
that three-way passing play. Well, those who watch him with the Montreal Canadiens recognize him as a defensive defenseman, but once in a while, he'll cramp up ice and help out. Doesn't happen a lot. Took some lessons from Sarah Savard with the Canadians who will do the same thing. Here, behind the net, middle to middle, and out in front, and there was Lindstrom all along, but he couldn't get the handle on it. Fedisov, ahead, Komozov over the line, Fedisov, and he hooked it wide. Moving in at the blue line is Kazatinov. It's out to the line. Now here comes Middleton with Gear, and Middleton just slips it in, and he takes a hard hit. In the corner now, as things open up, out to the blue line, puck fan. At center ice, Komotov, Middleton comes right back in as he gives it to Lindstrom, and Middleton on the give and go, but he couldn't control it. Middleton out in front, it goes by everybody. On the far side, Sportsov, he loses it to Gear. Middleton behind the net, along with Fedisov, cleared around the boards. On this side, Komotov, at center ice for Shaluktov. Shaluktov, the shot, steered into the corner by Leut. Now out in front, it goes by everyone at center ice, Babanov. Babanov backing up. The Soviets making a change off the boards and past Bossy. At center ice, puck is cleared back into the Soviet zone. And back forward is Babanov. On top of him is Troche. Puck comes to the blue line. Bossy, Bossy clearing it into the corner. Great effort by Bossy. Behind the net now, Kazadunov. Gillies throws a check in there. All kinds of contact. Troche, Bossy's out in front of the net. Troche battling behind the net. Bossy's got the puck. Moving in his fork, and he took a shot. Now out of center ice. The speedy Makarov down over the line. Makarov looking for a man in front. Rudolph couldn't hold it. Out in front of the shot, they score. Larionov got that pass. The defense got trapped down at the other end, and it paved the way to the goal. Well, what happens is the Soviets come with the late bend. You see Makarov looking for the late bend right in the slot. Krutov, as the last defender goes by him, he goes by the net, throws it back out in front of Larionov, who converts the pass. But the team Canada got caught at the blue line, and they had the fourth man coming. We've seen three men for the Soviets in the picture, and it's the fourth man coming late in the play, Larionov, who converts the pass to score for the Soviet Union. Well, Team Canada running into a hot goaltender here in the Soviet Union has taken the lead. Larionov will get the goal. The details in a moment is against the boards. Here's Engblom. Engblom shooting it off a leg. The Soviets come to center ice with Shepilev. Shepilev passing it for Kapustin. Shepilev covering up. Gets set in front of the net, and it's off Gretzky's leg. Gretzky to the far side for Zion. Zion trying to get it to Gretzky. It's cleared in front off the skate of Engblom and chipped out to center ice by Beck. Zion trying to beat it ahead for Vasiliev. Beck, Beck crossing center ice, shoots it in. That's Babanov off the boards. Anglom will go back into his own end for it. Out of his net is Liut to leave it for Anglom. Anglom ahead for Lafleur, up to Gretzky. Gretzky to the line, he's checked. Buck break wide, Shalomov, he is knocked down. And it's called for a face-off. Canada Cup 81, we'll continue in a moment. Second by second, hour by hour, day by day, when you save at the Continental Bank, time is on your side. Because whatever type of savings account you choose, you'll earn interest on all your money every day. And no other bank can say that. Continental Bank of Canada, bankers in action. Off right at center ice, the goal. Laurianov, his third of the tournament from Krutov and Makarov at 4.56. From the faceoff, Puck bounces high in the air. Ganey battling for it along with Rostetsky against the boards. Loose at center ice, Goring trying to get it ahead for Dugay. Robinson now, Robinson straight off ice. Here's Billy Letinov, clearing it in, Robinson. Robinson straight ahead, Goring just beats it off to the far side. Ganey trailing on the play, now Goring in front, and Dugay took a whack at it, but it, he fanned on it. Circling back now is Golikov, off to the far side. At center ice, Dugay intercepts. He gets it over the line, but he's checked as he hit the line by Billy Letinov, and it's cleared back into Team Canada territory. Hot fan. Hot fan off the boards at center ice for Ganey, along with Dugay. Ganey winds up. The shot hits the glass behind the net. Dugay going in after it, along with Per Vukin. 
at center ice. Hunt Van turns, feeds it off the stick of Goring. Dugay, Ganey moving up after it. Ganey backhanding it into the Soviet zone. Team Canada will make a change as Per Buchen goes back. Per Buchen, Gimaev at center ice. Gimaev circling back with gear on top of him. Now feeds it back into the Soviet end where Billy Letinov has got it. Clear to the far side. Billy Letinov behind his own net. Fedosov ahead now to big Shlukov at center ice. Over the line come the Soviets. Shlukov gets that drop pass, rolls it in front, and it's deflected into the corner. Fedosov, Gear, now on the far side, Schwarzkopf. Hartsburg, he's checked on the play. Big Schwarzkopf now out to the blue line. Here's Fedosov. His shot is blocked. Went off the ankle of Gear. He seems to be favoring it a bit as the puck is cleared up over center ice. Fedosov goes back down into his own zone. Fedosov at center ice. The Soviets moving the puck well now. Schluchtov. Schluchtov in over the line. Schluchtov with a shot. Down goes Leo. He's got it underneath him and holds for a face-off. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. Buying a lottery ticket? Uh-huh. How about a super lotto? You mean this one? Super lotto's the only lottery that can make you a millionaire now. <laughs> with three big chances at a tax-free million. <laughs> What's going on? A new scratch and win that can make you $10,000 richer instantly. How'd you do that? And a super Sunday draw at the end of each month. Hey, buddy. Yeah? I'm sold. Good. Can you teach me how to do that? The only lottery that can make you a millionaire now. Both teams opening up now. Zhluktov moving across that line, going to the outside. Making that shot, Mike Leut stopping it, going down, making sure he kills that rebound. But the teams now are starting to open up and go more end-end. End. They're throwing a little bit of that caution to the wind now. Larionov, Krutov, Makarov, the line for the Soviet Union. Krutov in against the boards with Potvan. Potvan controls Robinson to Gillies. Gillies tries to get it out. Now he battles along the boards, and it's kept in. Cleared along the blue line and out to center ice. Babinov, number four, Rick Wide, Gillies. Tracking it down, and he hammers it off the boards and down into the Soviet zone. Trotche's in deep. Trotche to Bossy. Watch Gillies out in front. Scores! is from the face off now Kapust and he missed it just ducked away from a check by Potvan Robinson shoveling it along the boards Per Buchan keeping it in he cleared it to the side of the net over to the far corner where Kapustin gets it Gillies Gillies trying to lift it along the glass and it hopped in over the glass and it's called for a face off so it's a 1-1 tie Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment Jumping. Take us way up high, lie back, see the world go by, a kaleidoscope of color. It's a dance across the sky. Blue smiles along with dew. There we caught you smile. From the face-off, Crutcher's got it against the boards. He clears it behind the net. Out in front, there's Bossy with a chance. And he shot it on the net, and it's cleared down by the defense. Robinson going back. Shalomov's on top of him, and Robinson touches it, and it's called for the face-off. And that's the sixth time the Soviets have iced the puck in the game. Canada in control in that department. 
They have not iced the puck at all. Well, Trotje just banked that puck off the edge of the net, and it took that uh, odd bounce and hit the angle behind the net and came right back out in front for Bossy to get the opportunity, but he put that puck just off the back of the net. That 11-14 is time remaining in the period, by the way, on the faceoff. Nearing the midway point of regulation time as Gretzky's against the boards with minutes off. Gimaev shoots it in. Hartsburg going back after it. Rostetsky behind the net. He's on top of it. Dangerous player is Rostetsky. Clears it up to the blue line. Gimaev keeps it in. Here's the floor. The floor trying to get loose. And Gimaev covered up very well. Rostetsky in against the boards. Now trying to get it out in front. Zion coming back. Makes the play. Clears it against the boards. It's kept in. Here's the shot. It's wide of the net. And Lafleur comes back. Lafleur. Circling back under the board checking of Gimaev. Now it's hoisted down the ice into the Soviet zone. Benisov going back to touch and icing will be the call here. As you look at Benisov, Yacheslav Benisov has a history of back trouble with this team, but has done a good job in this tournament. Well, I, I don't know what caused the back trouble, but I can tell you one thing. In the three short years since he was a junior, he has been on some kind of strength training program because he seems like he's about 25% bigger and stronger than he ever was when he played in the World Junior Championships. Right here in this building, 1978. Right here in this building. There are the shots on goal, 17 to 8. Face off to the left of the Team Canada net. That's Barry Beck behind the net. Beck. Now feeding it off on the right side. At center ice, Engblom moving that puck, and he shoots it in. Digging in after it is Ganey. Ganey took behind the net, and Duge tried to get it out in front. It's still loose out in front of the net. Finally, the Soviets cover up as Big Shalutov. Behind his net, starting out, is hooked away from him as Goring is doing a great four-checking job. Now Fabino behind his net, over to the far side, and it's cleared down the ice by Sportsov. Engblom back to touch it, icing, and the Face off down in the Soviet end. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. Когда мы приезжаем в Канаду, мы любим хорошо поесть бифштексы, молочные коктейли, канадский бекон, а еще мы едим много орехов, плантерс. Мы русские любим их за то, что они вкусные, хрустят, и особенно за то, что они свежие. Орехи, плантерс, мы едим их в Канаде. Но их придумали в России, не правда ли? Видишь, из Рубрятни, но в России. We're in a 1-1 tie here at the Montreal Forum. This program is copyrighted strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or exhibition of this telecast without the express written permission of the CTV Television Network and Harcom Consultants Limited is strictly prohibited. 10:02 gone in the second period. Face off, down in the Soviet end. Trotje, correct that, that's Linsman out there. Along with Middleton, who's gonna take the draw now, and Gare, here's Robinson. Robinson, wristing it down in front, down goes Gare. Buck is loose inside the zone, Middleton to Robinson. His shot deflected in front as Middleton was cutting through the goal mouth area. Now out in front again, and the Soviets will try to bring it away. Karutov at center ice, getting it ahead to Larionov. Linsman against the boards on the far side. Billy Lindenoff is checked. Back in over the line comes Makarov. Makarov cutting in front of the net. The loose puck is pushed away by Potvan. Terbukin moving in. Back out to the blue line. Billy Lindenoff with a shot. The kick save there by Liu. Against the boards with the Soviets applying pressure. Krutov. Krutov checked by Robinson. Middleton is there. Middleton up the left side. Tried to flip it ahead for Linsman. He's got it. Clears it to the line.